I grew up in Berlin at the height of the Cold War, which was an incredibly decadent but also terrifying place. When I was a little kid, my father and I used to go into East Berlin to buy state-subsidized sheet music. And my father would plant money in my sock uh, to smuggle in because Western currency went a lot farther in the East than Eastern currency. And so we would go through Checkpoint Charlie into Prenzlauer Berg, where we went to this tiny music shop run by a little old man, and I would pull out the money from my sock, and my father would buy a bag full of state-subsidized classical music. He's a concert pianist. And then we would walk all the way back to Checkpoint Charlie, me terrified that we were going to get busted, but also completely thrilled by the adventure each time. And it's been it's an indelible image in my mind of Berlin at that time. When I was 16, I had the greatest job I've ever had in Aspen, Colorado, working at a self-serve gas station, the only gas in town, which was outrageously expensive, so no one came in, except for Jack Nicholson, who had a beat-up old Harley and would pay with an Amex. And I would always ask for his autograph, and he would say, wise ass. But most of the day I sat in a lawn chair with money wrapped around my fingers. I had ones, fives, tens, twenties wrapped around my fingers in one hand and a book in the other hand. And I read at least a book a day, sometimes two. And I read hungrily, completely randomly. So everything from The Shining to Camus to just about anything um, that I could get my hands on in paperback. And so I was paid to read, not much, but it was still the greatest job I've ever had in my life. When I was 14, I moved to Baltimore and lived with my mother and went to the Boys Latin School, an all-white male, wonderful, wonderful school, um, where all of my classmates listened to um, the latest in cock rock, from Led Zeppelin to Aerosmith, which I didn't quite relate to. Um, but I didn't know what else was out there. So I had an all-in-one Tandy 8-track player cassette uh, radio that I would listen to late at night, listening to radio plays. And one night I tuned to the left into kind of crazy land and stumbled upon WJHU, John Hopkins radio station, which was a 10-watt radio station. Um, and what I heard was the talking head's psycho killer. And I was completely terrified and mystified by this. But I was also drawn in and saw the light immediately. And, and so I stayed up all night listening to everything punk rock. Um, Sex Pistols, Clash, Joy Division, it all sort of came in and I, it was my sort of awakening to that there was a world outside of Baltimore and escape through music.